Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. It is a bit cold here. I will tell you more about that in the chicken and garden update. It should be already live on this channel if you haven't already watched it and you fancy it, go and have a look because I quite enjoy making those videos and it appears that while not all of you like them, uh, there are a fair few that do. So go on, go watch that chicken and garden and I'll tell you more about the weird weather that we've been having of late. What I want to talk to you about today on this particular video is planned obsolescence of EVs. I am of course talking about EVs whose battery packs have reached a point where they may need replacement or where there is a complicated computer system in the vehicle that is no longer readily available because computer technology has moved on at such an incredible rate. Obviously, the idea of planned obsolescence is something that comes to us from the technology world. Apple, of course, being famous for building planned obsolescence into its iPhones and its computers. Here at the studio, we have a 2017 iMac Pro that we're going to have to, I think, maybe do a Kickstarter or some kind of fundraising to raise funds to replace. Not necessarily because... It's a computer that is is becoming old and, and doesn't work, although it is becoming unreliable, but because it is falling out of Apple's planned obsolescence. And that means that fairly soon, I, I am anticipating within the next year or so, it will stop being eligible for software updates and it will be difficult to keep it uh, up to date with security updates and other things. And it's not just Apple, of course. Windows has done the same thing with its computers. Um, you can run Windows 95 if you really want to and still browse the internet, but you put yourself at risk of getting a virus or some other nasty come along and cause you problems because your computer wasn't the most up-to-date with the most up-to-date operating system. And while Linux is a great solution and we have multiple Linux servers in the house, um, it's harder to run a production environment. But anyway, I'm going off track. Cars. So my first electric car was a City L. It was a tiny three-wheeled bubble car with a low speed of about, top speed of about 35 miles an hour on a good day. And when things went wrong with that car, there was a community of people that, that kind of bandied around and allowed me to continue to operate that vehicle. In fact, I held a special weekend at my house in the UK back in, I think it was 2008, where we had like a half dozen City Ls come to my house and we all worked as a team to rectify problems and solve issues and, and fix them and get them all working again. Obviously, as electric cars have become more complicated and we've moved away from purely hardware driven electric vehicles i.e vehicles with components that you can replace with a soldering iron and then get back on the road or physical switches and rheostats that don't require any microelectronics at all to operate we're moving into an area where capacitors die on motherboards on on computers where battery packs are no longer available because they're not being made and no upgrades are available and all of these other things that I really first started to experience in earnest with my RAV4 EV. Now my RAV4 EV was a first generation Toyota RAV4 EV of course, it had the nickel metal hydride battery pack, but because of a patent lawsuit and because of other issues all covered in who killed the electric car and revenge of the electric car, it was very difficult to get reliable sources of nickel metal hydride batteries to keep that car on the road. And while other parts of the car slowly died and, and had issues, they were relatively easy to fix and, and keep functioning as opposed to the battery pack, which was not. But as we're seeing more and more cars with over-the-air software updates, which are a great thing because over-the-air software updates allow you to keep your vehicle current, the flip side of that is that the automakers can then also decide to cut you off, to say, no, we're not going to allow you to be able to upgrade your vehicle anymore because your vehicle is too old for the latest software. And at that point, 
you reach that point of, of planned obsolescence where the company that made your car is effectively going, we don't want this car to be on the road anymore. We don't want you to own the car, perhaps. We don't want you to be able to work on the car and keep the car on the road. I know Tesla is very anti-right to repair. I know lots of other automakers are becoming anti-right to repair and trying to get an answer out of an automaker when there's a problem with your vehicle that you're fairly convinced is fairly easy to fix. It almost in invariably becomes a software issue. A good point here is my F-150 Lightning, which the camera you guys are currently seated on. And we have some issues with this over-the-air software update. I've chronicled it on the main channel where the over-the-air software update won't apply because it believes, the car believes that the 12 volt battery is not healthy and therefore the only way to fix it is either to break out the big heavy um, ODB on board even, OBD2 uh, connector and a laptop, or to take it to my Ford dealer and hope that they replace the 12 volt battery under warranty and that fixes it. I'm not entirely sure it will, but right now it's easy because my car is under warranty or rather my truck is under warranty and we can fix it and we can get on the way. But, you know, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, will a vehicle like my F-150 Lightning still be on the road? I was... I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and it's partly due to watching The Last of Us, that incredible, incredible TV adaptation on HBO of the video game of the same name. It has just finished. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. It is an incredible, incredible adaptation. It is a, a series definitely worth watching. But in that series, you know, we're constantly faced with a concept of vehicles that have been sat for a while that people try and get working or people try and keep vehicles working by salvaging parts from other vehicles to keep them on the road. And I realized that in the EV world, we don't have that. There's no homogeneity between different manufacturers when it comes to battery pack design and uh, parts you can swap out. You know, it's fairly easy to get a fuel pump from a say pre-90s car and this tv series is set in kind of it starts around the turn of the century so it kind of it, it, it we're being brought up to date at the moment or we will be in the next season but we're seeing older cars that might have been easier to work work on things like fuel pumps spark plugs fairly interchangeable between many internal combustion engine vehicles. Not necessarily the same when it comes to electric vehicles and electric vehicle components. And so, you know, at the moment, we EV drivers are beholden to the car companies that made our vehicles to keep supporting them, to keep supplying parts for them. And once that dries up, we're on our own and we have to rely on third party providers often who are working with reverse engineered solutions just to keep our vehicles on the road. And it makes me wonder if this was something that automakers intended. And I, I include Tesla in that list, right? Um, there was a big news story this week about insurance companies. You know, if, if a battery pack has been damaged in any way, shape or form, even if it's just a, a little knock, insurance companies won't get it repaired because the risk of something going wrong with that battery pack is is too high as far as they're concerned and so the vehicles get scrapped. Now those battery packs very often go and live in third-party EV conversions or perhaps get purchased um, when the car is sold off as a salvage vehicle and end up back in an EV anyway but the concept that you know our vehicles will get to a point where they're very easy to be written off by insurance companies. There'll be the planned obsolescence there. And also these the parts availability for our cars now. Is it something we, as owners of our cars, should start planning for? Should I start stockpiling spare parts for this truck? Uh, it's a question that I've actually thought to myself several times now, should we start stockpiling parts for the Bolt? I mean, we've got a spare uh, touchscreen navigation display that needs to go in, in this one because this one had a similar problem to my, my Bolt. Uh, this is my wife's Bolt. Um, and it had that same kind of, um, the, the touchscreen display starts to die. Uh, but as anybody who's collected vintage computers and um, vintage electronics knows, there becomes a point at which 
electronics components are only going to last as long as the skill of the people owning them lasts. And if we want people to transition to electric vehicles, we need to have a much more broad and open attitude to third party, to right to repair, to third uh, party pattern replacements, third party repair, and also owner repair. And of course, a lot of people will say, yes, but electric vehicle battery packs are dangerous. They contain a lot of energy. They could explode. You could become electrocuted and then you would not be alive anymore. And the answer to that is pretty simple. For the last hundred years or more, we've been okay with people tinkering on internal combustion engine vehicles in their garage. The, the high voltage of uh, a coil for an ignition system is still very dangerous and can be, sure, lower current, but still very high voltage. And you can do yourself some serious damage if you don't put your internal combustion engine together properly. I mean, think about the dangers of, of starting an, a, a, a pre-electric start internal combustion engine vehicle. You had to use a, a starting handle. You used to break your fingers off or your thumbs off if you didn't know how to use it properly. And as someone who owned a car with a starting handle, who knows how to use a starting handle, I could attest that if you screw it up, uh, you, 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 you hurt. And so I want to know what you would like to see from automakers in order to reassure us that planned obsolescence is not a thing, that our cars are not going to come from the factory with the best before date that says, OK, eight years down the road, the vehicle may still work, but we're not going to provide you with any parts or service, or we're going to make it difficult for you to get parts, or we'll be in a position where, as it was with the RAV4 EV, where there's kind of this folklore that goes around that says you can't get this, you can't get that, you can't get the other thing. I was told uh, with my RAV4 EV that there was no way on the planet that I was going to be able to find a replacement heated front windscreen for my RAV4 EV. It previously lived in the desert and so it had been sandblasted to kingdom come. But you know what? I was able to find a replacement heated windscreen and it came and it was installed. But I think that was partly not because Toyota had a, had a stock of it, but because Autoglass, the, the company that, that actually replaced my windscreen, had one in stock down in California. They were able to bring it in and fit it to my uh, RAV4 EV. I don't know if they still have any left. I assume, but who knows? I'd say let me know in the comments below. But as you'll know, if you've been watching the channel recently, we don't turn our comments on anymore. And it's been a lot nicer not having comments. I'm sorry, I do love talking to all of you, but not having to deal with people on YouTube posting nasty anonymous comments has really made my life a lot, lot better. That is it for today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to let us know your thoughts in our Discord chat room by reaching out to us on Mastodon, which is a great place to do it. Or if you are a Patreon supporter over on our Patreon page. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to Kofi, Bitcoin and our Slag store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. And it's sort of snowing, sort of raining. It's not very nice. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters as a very loud diesel truck goes by. They are Mike Weeder, Denny Hindland, Irish Lance Schlal, Mark Eggleton, Cyprian Laplace, John Trammell, Alan Tupper, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Sean Tucker, Pedro Moura Pinheiro, Carl Hodgson, Tony Mouse, Brophy Wolf, Kyle Fox, Hey Esker, Tesla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Steph from Fremgen, Stephen Williams, Regine Fellows, Chris Ascentar and Jim Burness. And finally, out of this world, thanks to our top tier supporters. They are John L. Henderson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, John Lyons, Kevin Boroughbridge, Andrew Glenn, Joe Hughes, Dave Kitchen, Joe Bresney, Nigel S, Matthew Drobnak, Eric Knack, Paul Conway, Stephen O'Donoghue, JP Fagerback, Reggie Watts, Marcel Ward, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Rory Litwin, Ellery Hansley, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday over on our main channel and here on a Sunday on Transport Evolved to Take Two where you'll find this video and of course the chicken and garden update. 
We are on a road trip this week, so we might be a bit uh, slow to respond. We're driving all the way down to Southern California and back. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have time to stop and say hello to people. We have a very packed week ahead of us and lots of filming to do. I can't talk much more about it at this point, but we will be back next Saturday, April the 1st. That does mean that Transport Evolved's TEN News Roundup show will be an on-the-road edition on April 1st. But until then... Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your week. Watch the content we have prepared for you in advance because it's awesome. And keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>